In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how you can write code in one subroutine, which allows it to call another one. This is a technique that you'll find yourself using more frequently, the larger and more complex the projects you work on become. What I'll do first is open up the file that I've already downloaded and extracted. And if necessary, I'll enable the content as this workbook already contains some VBA code. On the worksheet that you'll see, you get a list of the 32 teams who played a role at the 2018 FIFA World Cup. But if you're not a football fan, don't worry because it's not really about football. What we have are two buttons that are set up to highlight some cells in the list. So the first button here that highlights the semi-finalists will, when I click on it, do exactly that. These are the four teams who played a role in the semi-finals. And if I click on the clear highlighting button, that will simply reset the formatting back to its original. What I'd like to do next is have a look at the code that achieves that. So if I head into the developer tab and then open up the Visual Basic Editor, I've created two separate modules in this particular project. The first module contains the subroutine that highlights all the semi-finalists. So I'll open up that one first by double clicking on it. And we have a single subroutine, which doesn't do anything particularly complicated. Most of the code we've seen here already, we select a cell and then apply a few basic formatting options to it. So we change the interior color and the font color and make the font bold. If I look into module two, it's essentially exactly the same setup, but this time we change the interior color to none and the font color to black and disable the bold property. I'm going to close down module two because for the first part of this session, I'd like to focus on the highlight semi-finalists procedure. The main issue we have with this subroutine as it stands is how much of the code in it repeats. So you'll find this little section of code which formats the selected cell, repeated four times in the same procedure. This makes it time consuming to create, even if you do just copy and paste the code. It's also somewhat more difficult to maintain if I decide, for instance, that I wanted to change the highlight color. I've got four places in which I need to do that. The other issue is that it makes the code much longer than it really needs to be. So we can solve all of these problems by separating out this little section of code which provides the formatting into a separate subroutine, which we can then call. Let's start by creating a new subroutine. It doesn't really matter if this is in the same module or not, but it kind of makes sense, I think, in this example to create the new subroutine immediately below the previous one. So let's begin a new subroutine, which I'm going to call format the active cell. It's entirely up to you as to whether you'd like to use underscores to separate out the individual words, but in this case, I'm not going to bother. The next job is either to cut or copy the code I want to place into this new subroutine from the original one. It doesn't matter which of the four copies I pick, so I'm going to pick the bottom one here. I'll copy that section of code and paste it directly into the format of the active cell procedure. What I can do now is replace the section of code, the four sections of code, I should say, in the original subroutine with a call to the format of the active cell procedure. So let's start at the top of the highlight semi-finalists subroutine. I'll begin by removing this code. And then I want to call format the active cell. The simplest way to do that is to simply type in the name of the procedure. You can get some help with the IntelliSense as well if I press control and space at the beginning of the line and then look for format the active cell. You should find that your new subroutine appears as a method within the IntelliSense. So you can just about make that out here. So if I continue to select that and then insert it, I can then do exactly the same thing for the other three examples So format the active cell. And rather than writing this out again, I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard at this point, And then I can simply paste over the remaining two examples of that section of code. So there we go. That makes this subroutine much shorter and easier to read. And it avoids the repetition of code by storing it all in one single place. It's worth mentioning at this point, because you may well see it used in other people's code, that you can also call a subroutine by placing the actual word call in front of the subroutine's name. So if I say call format the active cell, that's just doing exactly the same thing as format the active cell. One reason you may prefer to use this syntax is because it makes it more obvious that you're calling a subroutine you've written yourself, rather than referring to one of VBA's existing methods. Personally, I tend not to use it in the real world, but just be aware that you may see other people doing that. 
it's definitely worthwhile seeing what happens when you step through a procedure which has calls to another one. So I'm just going to rearrange my screen as previously by making the VB editor fill up one half of the screen and the Excel window fill up the other half. If I click into the main subroutine, the highlight semi-finalists, and then begin pressing the F8 key to step through. The first instruction happens as normal, cell A4 has been selected. When I reach the format the active cell statement and press F8, I'll see that my code immediately jumps to the beginning of that subroutine, and then continuing to press F8 now steps through the instructions there. When I reach end sub, that doesn't end everything in the module. What that will do is jump to the next line in the original subroutine. So if I press F8 now, I'll find that I return to the next line in the highlight semi-finalists procedure. So I can then at that point continue pressing F8 and you'll see that each time I call format the active cell, it jumps to that procedure, runs it in entirety and then returns to the original one. If you get bored at any point, please feel free to press F5, which will just continue running the subroutines all the way through to the end. When we reach end sub in the original procedure, then everything stops. When you start writing subroutines which call other procedures, it's worthwhile thinking a little more carefully about their scope. By default, the scope of a procedure in VBA when you write it is referred to as public, and that means that I can call that subroutine or that procedure from any other module in the same project. So for example, were I to insert a new module, quickly and simply, write a new subroutine in here, which I'll just call test for convenience. If I press control and space on the keyboard and look for, for example, the format, the active cell procedure, I can see that that one is available in the IntelliSense, so I can call that from another module. That's true for all of the other procedures in this project so far. If I return to module one, it's possible to explicitly state that this procedure should be public. It's unnecessary to do so because that's the default anyway. But if I write the word public before the word sub and return to module three, I'll see once again, if I delete the call to format active cell, I can press control and space and look for the format the active cell procedure again. If I were to return to module one and this time change the word public to the word private, this restricts the scope of this subroutine to the module that it exists in. So I can call format the active cell from another subroutine in module one. And I can see again, if I look for the format the active cell procedure in the IntelliSense here, there it is. But if I go to another module like module three, press control and space and look for the format the active cell procedure, I'll find that this one isn't here any longer. This means that if I attempted to run this subroutine here, if I press F8 to begin stepping through or press F5 to begin running it, it will tell me that that sub or function, that procedure is not defined. So that's just a little note on the scope of that, uh, of, sorry, the scope of procedures in modules in VBA. I'm just going to right click and remove module three and then return to module one. So I'm not going to export it. I shall double click back on module one to return there. So at this point, you're either welcome to move on to the next part of the lesson, or if you prefer, open module two and have a look at the extra practice section at the end of this page.